Let's see about rhinosporidiosis. Rhinosporidiosis is a chronic granulomatous disease caused by rhinosporidium seabury. So it is a chronic granulomatous disease caused by rhinosporidium seabury. Rhinosporidiosis is most commonly seen in tropical countries like India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. In India, it is more common in southern part of India like in states of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Puducherry and Andhra Pradesh. Sometimes rhinosporidiosis can also be seen in animals. Coming to the etiological agent. Commonly this is caused by rhinosporidium seabury as we have seen earlier. Sometimes it is considered to be caused by protozoa. or a fish parasite belonging to the DRIP group D R I P. D stands for Dermocystidium, R for Rosette agent, I for Ichthyophonus and P for Sorospermum. Next life cycle of Rhinosporidium seabury. There are three stages, trophic stage from which it gets converted to development of sporangium, then production of endospores. These endospores are infective in nature. This sporangium has a thick wall which consists of two layers, outer chitinous layer and inner cellulose layer. And their presence of endospores within the sporangium. So when the sporangium ruptures because of high internal pressure, the endospores are liberated into the environment. Next the clinical features. Clinical features, rhinosporidiosis most commonly affects the nose and the nasopharynx. The other sites affected include eye, oral mucosa, genital mucosa, and lip, palate, epiglottis. larynx etc. The disease is also acquired by contact with contaminated water especially contaminated stagnant water as seen in ponds and it clinically presents as a leafy polypoidal mass which is pink in color and most commonly attached to the nasal septum or the lateral wall of nose. And the mass is very vascular in nature 
and it bleeds easily on touch. And this mask is also studded with white dots which represent the sporangia. So all these features gives it a strawberry polyp appearance. It is considered to be a strawberry polyp. In early stages, the patient complains of nasal discharge, which is blood stain because of the vascular nature of the polyp and also nasal stuffiness. Sometimes there can be only epistaxis as the presenting symptom. Coming to the diagnosis, diagnosis is confirmed by taking a biopsy which shows the sporangia of the rhinosporidium seberi. Finally, coming to the treatment, treatment, the main treatment is complete excision of the mass with diathermy knife and cauterization to stop bleeding. Also, Dapson has been tried in some cases. Let's see a quick review of rhinosporidiosis. It is a chronic granulomatous disease, most commonly caused by rhinosporidium seaberry. It is more prevalent in tropical countries like India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. In India, common in southern India. Sometimes this is also seen in animals. Etiology. It is caused by rhinosporidium seaberry. Sometimes it is said to be associated with certain protozoa or fish parasites, the drip group of parasites. Life cycle, it exists in three stages, trophic stage, sporangium and production of endospores. Clinical features, most commonly involves the nose and nasopharynx. The other regions involved include the lip, palate, epiglottis, larynx, eye causing conjunctivitis, oral mucosa and genital mucosa. Yeah. It is also seen in contaminated water. The patient presents with a leafy polypoidal mass which is pink in nature, more commonly seen in nasal septum or the lateral wall of nose. It is a very vascular lesion which bleeds on touch and there are presence of white dots on the surface which represent the endospores. So because of all this it is called a strawberry polyp. In early stages, the patient will have nasal discharge which is often blood stain and also has nasal stuffiness. Sometimes epistaxis can be the only presenting complaint for the patient. Diagnosis is by biopsy which shows presence of sporangia. Treatment is by excision with diathermy knife and cauterization. Sometimes dapson has been treated for treatment. This is all about rhinosporidiosis. Thank you.